the central questions of my work are almost uh, are when I took my first job in Janos Santagotes Institute, how nerve cells are connected to each other, who is talking to whom, and why to those nerve cells and not to the others. So I was very fortunate of early in my um, junior scientist job to make a major breakthrough uh, by discovering what Janos Santagota named the exoxonic cell. Uh, this is a highly selective uh, neuron that only communicates with uh, the workhorses of the cerebral cortex, the pyramidal cells. And it uh, innervates them in a very, very restricted small part of the pyramidal cell membrane. So all the communication takes place in a very small area and uh, of course we didn't know why. Why it has to go to that particular location uh, but uh, you know as everybody else we made wild speculations why and uh, that at the same time uh, predicted that if that cell appropriates a small area of the uh, postsynaptic cell membrane on which it will exert its effect, then it's forbidden for other nerve cells because only this nerve cell could go to that part of the pyramidal cell, which also meant that all the other nerve cells have to be selective in some way, avoiding that part. And that opened up then a whole field that is rolling on as we speak now. Uh, how different kinds of cells subdivide the surface of the cells to whom they talk. And what's the consequence of that? Why they have to do this? This uh, dawned on me much later, the actual explanation for this, which doesn't mean that we know the, the exact mechanisms, but there is a very good principle why this has to be so. And that's accepted in general today in the uh, neuroscience community.